Cool. No build up. <laughs> no, uh, ladies and gentlemen, I always do it. I always start with this. Ladies and gentlemen. Well, when we were down at Bondi, we used to do the whole Bondi. I'm going to have to come in the camera here. and I'm going to have to hug up next to you a little bit more. Why can't you see yourself? You can't see? Oh, yeah. This is, the, what, this is what I love about podcasting. Yeah, yeah. Because definitely. it's just not like, it's not like radio where everyone sees everything, the, the best of everything. You can just talk about Anything really. Whatever you want. You can yeah. start whatever you want. However and however you want. And there's no beep. There's no beep? Yep. What do you mean there's no beep? There's no up beep. Oh, you can say park, <laughs> shit. Good. I'm not going to go down the uh, pussy path that we were just talking no. about off there. That was a bit. Uh, yeah. We won't do that. That was a bit no. cringe with you. are a relationship in your Yeah. Much. Yeah. She can get away with it. I can't. Yeah. I no, see it's me saying the word then. I saw a hawk eyes right on me. Like, I'm going like, to. I'm going to kill this guy. <laughs> anyway, welcome in. Thank you. Lizzie, I don't even know your last name. Yurichi. Yurichi. Yeah, Yurichi. 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 Mm. Where's Yurichi from? Romanian. Oh, Romanian. I'm not Romanian, my husband. Yeah, okay. Yeah. Interesting. Yeah. What, are you Australian background then? Or? Yeah, Australian. Yeah. yeah. Awesome. Mm. Okay, that's it. Podcast over now. I'm no, done. No, there you go. <laughs> <laughs> She's an Australian married to a Romanian and there's our podcast. That's it. <laughs> Multicultural marriage. Marriage. <laughs> <laughs> so, so you girls are friends. Is that what's yes, happening Yes, we here? are friends. We've so, been friends for 20 odd years So I expect now. some good banter in this conversation. Oh. <laughs> that's some good gossip. Good so, good, oh, yes. <laughs> gossip. Days before, before no, social no, no, media. No, no I want deep shit in the social media. I want goss right now. Uh, on the spot, please oh, no. give me oh, something. Hey, hey, hey. I'm like her younger brother now, <laughs> yeah, so like hey. I'm like the little <laughs> annoying one. It will be brought up forever <laughs> in a day. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So we brought Liz in because we've been chatting lately and um, supporting each other um, in a journey that most people sort of don't know about um, or don't know you're going through. Don't talk about. Don't talk mm. about. And um, I think that you've come in because it was a, a few conversations we've had about coming on air with it yeah. because it is a um, under the covers discussion of, well, it's a, not a subject, but people, I suppose, aren't aware of you know, women that go through it. Yeah. Um, you kind of think it needs to be private, but it really doesn't. Yeah, exactly. Mm -hmm. um, so we're talking about getting your podcast up and running, mm -hmm. which is going to be called Fertile Ground. Fertile Ground. Yeah, it is called Fertile. We've decided. We've decided. We decided. Yeah. We're okay. Around. Done. So <laughs> we're talking ground. about the IVF. I know you hate journey. I, I mm. don't know what the other word for that is, but um, mm. it's an. Uh, what else would you yeah, call what it? Do you call it? I don't know. I guess it's a. It's a path to IVF, yeah. I guess is what I've got to talk about. It's um, it is a journey, but I think journeys just used a lot. Yeah, so I try not to say it. Yeah. I do out of habit. Mm. So, is it, so you you go through this journey of of IVF. Well, before you get to IVF, you go through a massive journey. Oh, really? Yeah. yeah. Run us yeah. through that. How does that work? Well, for okay. everyone, it's different, right? So, for me, it's been about three years mm -hmm. till we finally decided this is what we're doing. Mm -hmm. But when you when you start the process, you're like, yep, yeah, we're going to get pregnant, have a baby, no problem. And then it doesn't happen like that. Yeah. For a yeah. lot of people. Why? Like, just, I'm just curious, like, what, why, what, what, what would happen? What would cause that not to be able to go fertile? Um, well, I is guess. Is it the man, the woman? The... <laughs> but this is the big thing. A lot of people at the moment are saying we need to stop talking about it being the woman's problem. Yeah. Because it can be 50%. 50% of men can contribute to infertility. Yeah, really. Well, sorry. Yeah, infertility can be caused fifty percent of the time by the male. What? It just could be so many different things. It could be the quality of the sperm, how fast they swim, whether or not they can swim. Mm. It's called maturity. Um, in our case, we found out after a long period of time, we finally found out that my husband has what's called a balanced translocation. Okay. So you've got all these chromosomes that make you up as a human. Two of his chromosomes have swapped a small part, and they've switched. Which is fine. He's completely fine. There's nothing wrong with him. But when he goes to have children, if those chromosomes pass on an unbalanced amount, it can cause miscarriage. Oh, my God. Yeah. Never knew. No. Well, I didn't know until um, less than four months ago. I yeah. never knew something like that would happen. 
Oh, how? And so where, where are you at now then? Is this journey figuring out what the, is it, is, would you say, what is it, not issues, but then just not um, matching, or how, how to figure it how, out? How to fix the problem. How to fix the problem, um, is that what it is? Yeah, I guess at this point we we started seeing a fertility specialist almost 12 months ago, mm. and she ran us through a whole lot of tests. She like took about 10 vials of blood from both of us, she checked his sperm, all of that kind of stuff. Mm-hmm. And then a couple of weeks later, we go back for the results and she reads through them. She's like, you've got low vitamin D, you've got low iron, blah, 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 all that kind of stuff. And then she hits the page where she finds out about his, what's called a carrier type, which is where they read your chromosomes. And she said, this is where I think your problem might be. Um, can you fix that? No. There's nothing you can do about it. Shit. Yeah. So the next stage, what we have to do is go through IVF. And our type of IVF that we have to go through is not just the standard get the egg and put sperm in the, in the Petri dish and mm. see what happens. They'll take one sperm, they'll have a look at it, and they'll pick the best looking one. <laughs> That's as all they can do. They can't That's even... just a very <laughs> offensive. <laughs> like, <laughs> like the best looking now, sperm. Now you know what it's like. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So they look and they go, this one looks like it's going to be the, you know, the best swimmer. They can't tell just by looking at the sperm whether or not it's going to have this chromosome imbalance. Mm-hmm. They actually can't tell at all. It's not like they can test it. They've just got a cross their fingers and go for it. Mm-hmm. So then they'll put the sperm in the egg. Hopefully it uh, it works and becomes an embryo and then they implant the, the embryo just like they would with a normal IVF patient. Mm. So this is your next step. You haven't done the embryo transfer yet or no. the egg collection or the mm. hormone treatment? None of that. No, that right. That starts next week. Right. Yeah. That's a whole lot of fun. Yeah. Um, so essentially, like, yeah, we, that's sort of IVF, but we're going to take it to a, another, a whole other level. Wow, okay. Because like you say, it is a journey before you even get to that decision of doing IVF. Mm -hmm. Um, And to some degree, and I think this this might be the case with some other women as well, you almost feel like there's a bit of a failure there. Oh, yeah, 100%. You go through the the whole emotions of, I'm a woman, I'm meant to have children, I can't have children, what's wrong with me? Mm. Yeah. Yeah. And this is exacerbated by what I was saying before about how a lot of the pressure is put on the woman. If you can't get pregnant, mm. that could that could cause extra stress as well, which causes further problems. Is that correct? Yeah, yeah. Stress is a huge thing when it comes to fertility. So, mm. like, literally, I've gone from working in a. I was explaining to you guys what I did as a job beforehand, which mm. was really stressful. I binned it because I'm like, I just I need to focus on me and focus on being a lot more relaxed. And, mm. uh, well, yeah. we know what, you know, cortisol does anyway, cortisol mm. to the body and um, especially when trying to get pregnant. Um, I know in Chinese medicine they they always say, you know, cooling vegetables and fruits and, um, to, you know, as less stress as possible. I remember when I had Matilda, I was pregnant with Matilda about three months and we had to sign on the dotted line that day for a, our, to get our mortgage and I ran down to the Commonwealth Bank and the lady's there is like, you're pregnant. Pregnant, slow down, slow down. You lose it, and I was like, "I'm going to lose the house if I don't sign on this dotted mm-hmm. line today." So, tell me which stress or, but that was the yeah, their whole belief is that remove the stress, um, cool the body mm-hmm. if you are of hot um, temperature, which I am, run hot. Yeah. Um, but yeah, that whole process beforehand of you know I'm a failure. Why can't I have children? Um, mm-hmm. You know, this should happen naturally. Mm-hmm. You know, they say you spend your whole twenties trying to avoid pregnancy. Yeah. And <laughs> your whole thirties trying, trying to get, to get pregnant. pregnant. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, it's, uh, is that is that a thing? Like Katie just brought that up. Age. How does that play a part in this? Yeah, so that's for also, both as well, for male and female. Do do, um, do our sperms swim slower <laughs> as we get older, or how does it work? Um, I actually haven't had that conversation. My husband's younger than I am, so he's kind of in that bracket where he's doing okay right now. His the testing of his sperm they said is great. So even though his chromosomes have an issue, his sperm itself is totally fine. Mm. But what I understand is, women the age issue comes up a lot quicker than for men because men produce sperm and kind of release it so then it's, mm. it's kind of constantly in production whereas we're born with our legs yeah that's and, and once they're gone they're gone yeah okay the, the one thing i did because well, how many do you have sorry how, like how does that work millions oh really <laughs> no, i just with. didn't know like you're just yeah. collecting them in there yeah. i thought you created i didn't know you had them since birth yeah so that, there was Shit. a Learning. photo on social media recently that said, yeah. um, was it the grandmother carried the granddaughter because the grandmother had had all her eggs 
created by the time she was born, when she was, so she when she was pregnant with the mother, and the mother had her had the granddaughter in her body when she was born as well. So there was three generations of eggs, if you know what I mean. No. So the grandmother like has all of her eggs, and then she produces a child, a, a daughter in a daughter. her stomach, and yeah. as she's being produced, she has all her eggs with, while she's in the womb. Yeah. Which means that she had the granddaughter in her body. Is this every granddaughter? Or just... Yeah. Yeah. Every grandmother will have their granddaughter's eggs in their body at one time. Because not when they're a grandmother. No, when she was pregnant yeah, yeah. with the, the daughter. Daughter, yeah. The daughter is producing her eggs in the womb. Yeah. Which means that the granddaughter's egg was already in the. By the time she gave birth to the mother, yeah. The mother had already produced the granddaughter's eggs. Shit. Hmm. Wow. Well, yeah. Interesting. Interesting. So yeah. Yeah. Okay. I think when you first think I'm going to go get pregnant, you've got no idea about any of this stuff. No. Yeah. And if you're lucky enough to just get pregnant. It doesn't really pop up. You don't mm. really need to know about that. Story. Yeah. Yeah. The one thing that Al, because we did IVF last year, it was a big decision as well. We, we desperately wanted to have a second child and um, it wasn't happening. So we did go through IVF last year. Mm. Unfortunately, it was unsuccessful. We've decided that you know, we, we're blessed with the one. Yeah. But the one thing they did say, because I was very concerned about as you're getting older, the, the, the risk of, you know, um, birth defects, etc., mm. um, things like autism and whatnot. But actually, the, the doctor had said that actually comes from the male as they age. Mm -hmm. So the risk of Downs, autism, etc., is actually because of the male's DNA doesn't imprint over I as they age. Like that, yeah. So I was quite blown away with that because I definitely thought it was an age thing as, as we age. It was a, a female, but no, it's actually... So I've got to start female. having kids soon then. Pretty much, yeah. Stop popping them up. Um, <laughs> she's getting clucky. <laughs> so I'm probably go. more clucky than her though. Yeah. Totally. She's 25, so I'm oh. 31. I'm like, come on, let's do this. <laughs> oh, she's still partying. Yeah, she's, she's partying. still she partying. Was, yeah. She was at Fat Freddy's Drop last night partying. Yeah. But she drove. She drove. So I was the one partying actually. So maybe there's some build up there when you do have kids that you just pay back. What do you mean? <laughs> well, she's oh, driving really? now. She'll be driving through the pregnancy. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so post pregnancy, you'll be taking up slack, my yeah. friend. See, I, that's why I like Katie around. She tells me about these. She's like the older, wiser sister yeah, yeah, that I never had. Yeah. I don't know what's coming now. Yeah. Shit. Yeah, designated driver. Oh, yeah, and chef. So they're like the, and chef. So she has to momentarily go through this, like one time Fat Freddy drops, she drives, and then, you know, the whole pregnancy she drives. That's like going to be, what, two years of her driving? Yeah. In the next 15 to 18 years, I have to drive for her. You say that in theory, but a hangover with children is the worst ever. So, yeah, you, you should be right. She probably won't want to drink for a while. <laughs> Unless you've got babysits. Yeah. Yeah, that's true. Anyway, we digress, don't we? Digress. So, next step for you guys mm -hmm. is the hormonal treatment. Yeah, I guess so. So, we've got next week, we go in for four hours of meetings mm -hmm. with scientists, genetic counsellors, because... I don't know, when you did IVF, did you have to see a genetic counsellor? No, we we didn't have any of the issues that you've, you've yeah. got in terms of... Yeah, um, so that's more specific to us. So so basically for four hours we go and we have an interview with a nurse, a scientist, a genetic counsellor, and then um, a regular counsellor as well because they want to talk to you because it's an expensive process, right? So they want to make sure that you're both on the same page and you're emotionally equipped for what, what's about to come, I guess. Yeah, because it's expensive both time, mind and money-wise. Mm -hmm. Like it's, you know, it is expensive financially. It's emotionally draining in terms of the ups and downs and, and mm -hmm. the process itself. Yeah. Um, let's go back to funding that because we know now that you can pull it out of superannuation. I think you brought that yeah. up with me. Yeah, so so now what you can do, I don't know how long you've been able to do this, but now what you can do through the Australian Taxation Office is take some of your superannuation. So you are able to access super before you retire for things that may you may need surgery and, and things like that. So that's quite good that they're now allowing us to do that. Yeah. Mm. Um, and I'm in a couple of forums where lots of people are talking about this. Lots of people are accessing their super for this purpose. So what happens is you get a massive bill. You, uh, you then send off your paperwork to the ATO. They'll approve it and then they send it to your super company and they'll just put the funds straight in your account, you pay the bill. Wow. And then you also get a rebate through Medicare, which can be four to five grand. 
Okay. Which is good. As long as Do you, you have to put that back in your super? Uh, yeah, that was going to be the next thing. I, I don't know whether or not they're going to sort of say, check on that. Mm. But I think it's really important that you put it back into your super because... Party. <laughs> Going back to Fat Freddy's drop. <laughs> In a limo or a, or a uh, helicopter. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Absolutely. Yeah, so that's a good thing that they're able, you know, they to access you. That it, is, it is really expensive. Mm-hmm. Um, do, I mean, it's a hard one because it's a pharmaceutical company that's that's doing this. Well, so that it, well, is it? There's the pharmaceutical side of things, which yeah. is a couple hundred bucks. I've been told for, is that it? for your drugs. And yeah, yeah, it's about okay. three hundred dollars. So what's so, so that would they would they want to for you to go through this process again and again, or you know, like you know how I've heard just stories. Yeah, I don't know. Like I don't, I don't know a thing. Mm-hmm. So I'm, I'm stupid to the whole matter. But you just hear stories of IVF companies wanting to get you to do a couple of rounds because that's where they make the money. Yeah, I imagine that probably does exist. I just bumped into someone today who I know who told me she did ten rounds. Ten and rounds. Yep, ten rounds of IVF. I mean, that is. We did one, and I just can't imagine. 10 time wise emotionally mm. you just, just have to be so resilient to have yeah. to deal with that Plus, did they did they get a baby in there they did they oh, got okay. a baby in the end they're a same sex couple so they would have had the additional um implications of having to have sperm donor and all that kind of yeah. stuff which can also be costly mm-hmm. so i'd hate to think oh, how much that would have cost them ten rounds because it on average is about ten thousand dollars a round that's right wow. unless you do the primary ivf which is yeah. bulk build, which brings the cost down, but yeah. we're out of that bracket. We can't access primary because of the fact that we need to have the testing done and we need to have the special type of IVF. Yeah. So, so that, that's a good point for our listeners because we did both. We went to Monash IVF to start with and they did give us a figure of about $9,500. Mm-hmm. Um, and then we got a quote from uh, primary and mm-hmm. we ended up – it was very clinical. The difference is the service. I have to say, like yeah, Monash yeah. was amazing in terms of, you know, the, the level of service, the level of care, mm. um, but the price differential was $8,000. So, you know, I would have preferred to go to Fiji. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I completely agree, but I think the fact that we know what our issue is. Yeah. We know, like, if we went to primary, our odds would be probably quite a bit less yeah. because they, they aren't able to test the embryos before interacting them. Exactly. Which is important for us for what we've got going on. So. Yeah, I think that's a, that's a, a really good point. If it's stock standard, mm. there's no underlying issues in terms of the embryo or increased risk of of any um, defects there. Then yeah, definitely primary IVF. It's very clinical. They even text you when to you know take your medication and yeah. you know everything's very clinically done. Um, but if you know if finance is a problem, then it's definitely a way forward because okay. it's fifteen hundred dollars out of pocket. Um, around nine, 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 grand. nine grand, yeah. So, yeah. IVF. Yeah. This feels stressful. I'm stressed just talking about it. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah, I think it it, it is. Like and, just yeah. that relying on these these doctors to do yeah, the job, and, do get the job and get it yeah. done, and then. I believe that that's a lot of the stress is the fact that it may not work that first time yeah. and you have invested all this time, money, emotion and that's where it gets quite hard mm. in that phase as well. Yeah. Yeah. What about sperm donors? We talked about sperm donors before. Mm-hmm. Silly question. Yeah. Do they have to pay – um, are they part of the pregnancy? Are they, so they do they have to pay any support or something like that no. at, later in life? No, no. They would sign over – Right. And then do they, would they, that same sex couple, would that male be have the ability to go and see that child at all? Or? I think that probably, well, I don't Is know. Is that silly question? That question no, I think there's a register so that they can register if, mm. and if they, if their child ever wants to know them, they give, they give their consent or not. So I think that um, it, it come, comes back to the father mm. when they donate. Yeah. I think also, too, you could um, know the donor as well. Yeah. yeah. So, you know, if they're a friend. And talking about um, yeah, picking the good-looking sperm, 
<laughs> you look like oh, I'm a I know you. Bags, you're Brad yeah. Pitt. You're yeah. <laughs> That's twenty thousand dollars a vial. The catalog. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> you just look at the picture. Under Johnny Depp. Yeah. <laughs> do you want the Johnny Depp? Johnny Depp? Yeah. 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 Do you want them to be really smart, like the email, email, what's his mask? Elon, Elon, Elon Musk. Musk. Yeah. Elon Musk. So, or do you want the cheeky Liam Zolo with yeah. the ginger? The ginger. The ginger Zolo with, with the Italian. Bar. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, definitely. The two dollar buy, wouldn't it? <laughs> so, is there any way that you've prepared yourself, I suppose, to take that to the next step? Because it is quite harrowing the injections, the yeah. um, the timing of it, the blood tests, the because it's really this bit's the physical stuff. It's after you feel after the embryo transfer. That's the emotional stuff. Has mm-hmm. it worked? Um, you know, is it okay, etc. But the, yeah. the physical stuff is, is, is about to start with the injections and, and yeah. whatnot. I think I'm naturally one of those people that likes to research the shit out of everything, mm. which I've done. Like I've even read that apparently you can practice injecting on an orange. <laughs> I don't know if they told you that. Right, but no. Apparently that's a thing. That's how paramedics uh, practice injecting. They do it with a... Uh, Vodka? No, capsicum. <laughs> ah, perhaps um, it would be more like yeah so, okay. yeah so so emily's a pa- my partner's a paramedic so yeah. she's like if you could we, we still um should we don't steal sorry <laughs> capsicums uh, capsicums no uh if we if we're a bit hungover sometimes yeah you know certain people give us the IV fluids drip. and iv drip yeah, yeah, yeah so when emily was sick the other day she's like you can maybe you should do it for me. I'm like, I don't know what I'm doing here. Like, I've got to find a vein and stuff like that. I'm like, how would you practice? She wouldn't let me do it anyway because I'm not trained for it. But I'm like, how do you practice for that? And she's like, we used to practice on capsicums. And I'm like, don't you the whole time you were at, you know, last part of university going into your paramedic? I never saw you with a capsicum. So interesting. Anyway, I digress. That's what happens when I have coffee hitting my veins. I start talking absolute shit. Imagine me. That's that's um coffee mixed in with tequila from last night. Yeah, actually talk, makes me talk a lot of shit. Sorry, ladies, I digress. That's totally. We're cool. dancing yeah. soon. Yep. Yep. So, yeah. So I guess I've done a lot of research, and we've talked a lot about it. My husband's the complete opposite. So I like to research. He just likes to just wing it. Yeah. Just, I'm that guy. Yeah. <laughs> so I've kind of like a couple of times had to sit him down and go, we're going to watch this documentary together. <laughs> it's a great one we just, just watched called One More Shot. Yeah. Which is really cool. Um, so he focuses and he'll, he'll pay attention and then he'll get his, his head around it and, and be involved at that mm. point. So, mm. yeah, I just, I've just researched and I'm just mentally ready, I think. Mm. Yeah. And me after the first mm. <laughs> <laughs> It's something like I found that... I, I'm not a big researcher because I, I get fearful when I have too much information. So yeah. I like to just kind of throw myself into it and, and see what happens. Yeah. Um, and I think you just get on, like for me it was just like, right, this becomes quite clinical, right, it's 6 o'clock at night, let's let's do it. Yeah. Um, I think the hardest part was after it. Yeah. I, I What do you mean, like that. straight after it or after the... No, yeah, after the... Because you go through a period where you have to inject the hormones. It's about a 10-day period. Yeah. So you have to in, inject the hormones and then they uh, get you ready for a um, collection of the eggs. And that's at that point when it's all like, oh, how many eggs did they get? What are the quality? And then you're ready for the embryo transfer so that bit's the emotional side of it you know if they can get eggs firstly are they of quality and then can they like transfer them which is mm. for us unfortunately they, they couldn't they um the eggs had died in between collection and, and transfer oh fuck it <laughs> <laughs> see this is why seriously. we didn't have children <laughs> yeah. seriously there's a lot of the so, levels in there as well yeah. so only like with the eggs once they've been um fertilized mm. for us we've got to sit and wait not only to see whether they're fertilized properly then they're going to freeze them and send them off for testing for another three weeks right okay so that's it's even bigger so and then um, if they're not any good you know you've got to either just let them die naturally yeah we do nothing. Males do absolutely yeah. fuck all. We yeah. just like you girls, <laughs> ladies are gods. I'm telling you right now, the ladies fun. are gods. You actually get the fun bit. 
<laughs> yeah, we get to fund it. <laughs> take out the little room <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's it. it. Yeah, a bit just... of you porn or whatever it is. Yeah, I don't know about that. Though. All right, know, like, <laughs> a friend told me. Yeah, <laughs> red tube, or something? red tube, <laughs> Pornhub, you porn. Yeah. What do you want? Pornhub. Porn <laughs> How do you think we a get friend, out with a the friend? A friend told me. A friend told me. Pornhub. <laughs> it was derivative of the Pornhub. The Pornhub. <laughs> Makes sense. It's good branding. Yeah, it's good. It's good cross promotion. <laughs> you should get them down time. Yeah. <laughs> Slip of the key and you're at the port hub. Mm. Um, <laughs> so what were we talking about? Uh, well, it's, yeah. it's just digression. About yeah, how I'm women just... are quite resilient in the whole in the mm. whole thing. But I think yeah, like with childbirth, there is this hormonal response when you know yeah. it's like watching a fight being in a fight. When you're in a fight, you've got hormones pumping through, you've got a job to do, yeah. and it's actually worse for the people watching. It than the mm. people in it. That mm. is such a good analogy. Yes. That is so good. It's the same as childbirth, maybe. I don't know. But same as childbirth. Like, I think, you know, sometimes it might be worse, not worse, but for the male who's helpless, hasn't got that surge of hormones and a job to do, it can actually just be watching on and going, holy shit, like... Quite yeah, overwhelming, I imagine. There's yeah. poo, there's all sorts of stuff, and that's <laughs> coming from me, I reckon. <laughs> yeah, that's right. <laughs> Vomiting, pooing, and all that, I just can't handle You'll myself doing that. <laughs> passing out. <laughs> You're I'm passing out. <laughs> you girls are saints. I'm, I'm the one who would be the... The, the worst one. Yeah, that's usually the way. Yeah, yeah. The way. A couple of, pop a couple of valiums. So why are you with go. us? Why, 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 why Procreation, why you? apparently. <laughs> <laughs> no, you don't, apparently. You don't need us anymore, do you? No, not really. No. <laughs> Just for 30 seconds. Yeah. 30 seconds? <laughs> oh, yeah. It's a long time. Don't spend. <laughs> <Don't spend, yeah. laughs> I'm joining in on your 20 years banter, ladies. <laughs> Yeah, we're fortunately, yeah. There's no band. There's not much banter going on. What's going on? Yeah, because we talk about serious comedy. I know, but we've got to start making it a little bit light, but then go back to serious. I like yeah, that. Yeah, that's yeah. true. That's, that's good. Fun. Yeah, a bit yeah. of education, and then go back into yeah. a little bit of fun. Into the fun. Yeah. 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 It's so funny it's though. Fun. Like twenty years ago, if you hadn't told us, we would have been sitting here talking about this. We would have been like, whatever. Mm. Yeah. Really? Yeah. Ah, Ark on a Friday night. <laughs> ah. <laughs> I got booed from Ark. <laughs> they wouldn't let me. They wouldn't let me go in Ark bar. How come? Because I was too straight. Yeah, that would make sense. I'm like, of course I'm straight. I'm just, I had my ex girlfriend with my in, in my hands, like yeah. she had, I had holding hands. Of course I'm bloody straight. No. Been in there. Sorry, dude. Yeah. You can't. What a shame. It's a good place. So we went down the the road to the Colombian. Oh, yeah. Went in there, and uh, this guy walks up to my ex partner and goes yeah that guy's hot do you know him and she's like no i don't never seen him before in my life so he starts coming over and like hey dude hey hey man how you going like just trying to chew me i'm like that is so and then she told me and then i think like two hours later a girl came up to me and said oh look she's hot do you know her is she your friend i'm like no i've never seen him before in my life <laughs> hey back <laughs> <laughs> Hilarious. Anyway, that's why we went to work so they didn't let straight men in. <laughs> yeah, so you can harass the straight men. That's right. Well, yeah, we do just, that, don't uh, we? Yeah, went for the music. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> just the music. Just the music. Yeah, yeah. Best music in Sydney. Hey, so, with your partner, mm -hmm. do you just need that? Um, like, are you sitting down with him and have, showing him these documentaries? Is that what we? we can do like we just want to be there to support and is that yeah, just to relax you or i mean what 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 happened what's what what what's could, the purpose of doing that i know no i mean like what could we do more because that man, a man man just wants to fix things mm, that's, yeah, that's generally true. what we want to try and do so we're like what can we do to fix it so what do you need from us i think the most important thing is that empathy and mm. the whole understanding of what's going to come and what's going to happen and if you know, if the woman's going to lose her shit because she's pumped full of hormones, then... Yeah, no crazy bitch okay comments, please. That? <laughs> yeah. You're a crazy bitch. <laughs> yeah, because apparently that is a big thing, right? So we had our appointment Amazing. with our doctor a couple of weeks ago and he was, like, talking through everything. He's like, you know, there's going to be the hormones. And he looks at my husband and gives him this funny look and the two of them just nod. You know, they knew. <laughs> yeah. They knew. <laughs> yeah. They knew what was going on. Uh, it is. It's something that, you know, you can't explain. It's out of your control. You know, Tom nearly lost his head for leaving the toilet seat up and yeah that's only about four days of it so it's hormones <laughs> so it's not just i thought she was out to get me no oh, it's a bit of both <laughs> <laughs> Joking. she's lovely she she's lovely. gonna get me she's gonna get me off this podcast now, isn't she? <laughs> she hates you talking about so her much podcast. yeah so, well no look i just 
no one wants to be bad mouth. If Emily's doing a podcast about me, yeah, she, I would be spewing that if she talk, starts to talk about me on on a podcast. You know, so I, I respect the decision not to talk about her anymore. So everything's yeah, good. Everything's always good. <laughs> That's good. That's I'm gonna get in trouble now for saying everything's always good. Now. Either way, I'm in fucking trouble all the time. <laughs> I'm trouble from a mother for the first. 27 years, and then when I've got my yep. partner now, I'm in trouble by her. So, Always. it's two of them now. Yeah, you're scared of both equally. <laughs> She's, She's a Leo as well. So. Oh, oh. A Leo. Yeah, so I'm, I'm Libran. Libran. Oh, oh, I'm oh, very balanced. Yeah, Chilled out. Works. Chilled yeah, out. Leos and uh, Lib. How do you say it? I don't even know how to say it. Libra. 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 I keep saying it, and, and people say, You sound. Tampon. <laughs> yeah. Is it Libra yeah. or Libra? I say Libra. I think it's Libra, but I think they pronounce it Libra. Oh, language. really? Yeah. yeah. Okay. Cool. My sister's a Libra, and her initials are PAD. Oh. So, yeah. So she's oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah okay. Okay. Thank God for LZ. <laughs> 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 yeah. Just <laughs> And so, are you? Can you do to, in order to relax yourself mm -hmm. in this whole process? Yeah. Where does visualization come into this? Um, I think it would be massive. I'm a big fan of visualization and meditation. So, like, just have gone through that process, being excited about the whole, you know, yeah. that looking at that child, you know, birthing him for the first, and first mm -hmm. time. What am I talking about? Yeah, only time. Only time. They're not going um, back in. You're not going back in. <laughs> really hard because especially something we haven't talked about yet is that I've had four losses okay so, and mm. and every time you the first time you get pregnant you're real excited mm. second time you're like eh. by the fourth time you're kind of like you don't get your hopes up yeah mm. you're kind of not even really excited then you go to the doctor and she goes you need to have another blood test so you kind of got a cautious optimism mm. I think is the way to kind of say it is mm. that you really want to be pumped and excited because you want to be visualizing all the good stuff, mm. but at the same time, you kind of want to manage your resilience and expectations. Yeah, because it's hard, it's, it's a really hard balance. To it's almost like being an athlete, it has no no similar aspects, but you have to, yeah. you're going into it like a fighter or someone who's going into a boxing fight, you have to, yeah. you know, hope for the best, but you know, visualize yourself winning, but you just don't know the outcome. Yeah, absolutely. And yeah. I, think, I think you've probably nailed why my husband's so good at. Being like that because he is an athlete, so yeah, he's okay. got that mentality of work hard, head down, and focus. Mm. But also, it is what it is. Mm. His mentality yeah. is, you know, it is what it is, and it is what God wants. And yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm like, okay. And where did, where does religion come into this? Are you religious? Uh, yeah. yeah, yeah, and he's quite religious as well. Yeah. So for us, it was a bit of a struggle, the whole IVF thing. Yeah, okay. Well. Like we really wanted to go down the natural path, mm. and he was like, "No, no, it's what God wants," and blah blah blah. Yeah. And then we got to the point where we got these test results, and he's like, "Okay, let's do the IVF." Mm. So it's been a hard, long process for him to get his head around from that perspective, mm -hmm. but he's fully on board, one hundred percent now, because he's. Amazing. The point that you both brought up is about the religion aspect and the not wanting to interfere with nature. Because mm -hmm. I did have that in the back of my head in terms of, you know, what does it do to the egg? What does it do to the embryo, taking it out of the body and unnaturally um, um, fertilising it, putting yeah. it back into the body, like that whole process, freezing it, whatever you might have to do. To me, it's like, oh, I just don't, you know. It's so foreign and you kind of really think. That's new. We're, we're doing this stuff that's not kind of meant to be done. Mm. Yeah. But at the same time, these scientists are amazing. They're so good at what they do. Yeah. 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 So mm. you kind of got to put everything in there. Thanks. Thank God for scientists. Yeah. yeah. Seriously. Yeah. Which comes to the debate, though, of do you think knowing that we have got IVF, mm -hmm. that we do somewhat put it off? Like, if it had been 50 years ago when people were having kids 20 to 30, I mean, in my 20s, that was the last thing I thought about was having kids. Yeah. And teens. My, my parents were 18 when they had my brother. Oh, wow. So, yeah, and 24 when they had me. So I've got young parents. Yeah. They've got a 37-year-old son, and my parents are, what, 57 or something like that. John. So, that is cool. Yeah. <laughs> That's cool. Yeah. So, yeah, but I think, is it that we know that there's now development? I mean... This or, is the same question as abortion as well, though. Like... Mm. Do, uh, don't you reckon? Like, if you because there's, there's something there, there's that, an option. Is yeah, it, there's, there's an option. Do we use it? it? 
Yeah. And if you're on the side of IVF, mm -hmm. are you against abortion then? Um, I think it's, oh, that's a good question. I think it's individual to the circumstance mm -hmm. of the situation. Yeah. yeah. Definitely. You know, like, I like the idea of all life is a valuable life. Yeah. Um, but at the same time, if you were unfortunate and the circumstances of your pregnancy might have been something that was a product of rape or something like that, do you mm. really want to be carrying that pregnancy? Yeah, exactly right. Um, I think every individual case would be different. So individual. Yeah. Um, so it's, it's a hard Well, one. I know pl companies now like Google will pay for their female employees between the ages of 25 and 35 to have their eggs frozen. That's amazing. So, wow. you know, because they know that females, well, some of their most productive years in terms of work productivity are between 25 and 35. So mm. they don't want them taking maternity leave and then having to retrain them. And we know how innovative the workforce is now that if you're out for 12 months, let's face it, especially with technology and how, how we're advancing, that's a long time. That's a whole lot of retraining, basically. Yeah. So they're saying, well, we'll pay for your eggs to be frozen, mm. put it off. Mm. I think if we had have had that option when we were younger, we probably would have gone, yep, sure, no problem, let's do it. Yeah. You know, um, so what, 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 I don't get what the benefit of freezing the eggs at 25 to 35. Is that saying that they would you know, want them out so they don't want them to stop working so when they're 35? When they're 35, they can use their 25-year-old eggs. 25-year-old yeah, eggs. But either way, they're going to stop working for Google eventually. Yeah, but I think because 25 to 35, I don't even know now, as you get older, you slow down. Yeah. You can't do the 10, 12, 14 hour days. And these guys are pulling up to mm. 16, 18 hour days, you know. So you can't do that as you get older. So they're getting the, the best years out of you um, mm -hmm. with the most amount of energy, with the most amount of drive. Um, and then they say, okay, when you're 35, then they have children. Mm. When you want to slow down. When you want to slow down. Yeah, okay. Which, I mean, to me, in terms of an age factor, it makes sense in one way. I don't want to go to clubs after 35. No way. You know, I don't want to be out of bars. But 25, I do. Yeah. So, you know, I think it's... But then do you really want your eggs taken out when you're 25? Yeah. Are you like a rock star? True. <laughs> Maybe 20. <laughs> yeah, Take him out at 20. So. I was partying <laughs> like a rock star at 20. <laughs> oh, I wasn't partying until I was about 22. Oh, wow. And then I made up for lost time. I was yeah. in uni and head down, bum up. And then I found the PT world, actually. Yeah. That's just a <laughs> Once I got into the personal training world, I was like, what? I yeah. thought you guys were fitness. Was, was, <laughs> I remember one time that I was like 18 years old and I lost belief in the fitness industry in terms of like alcohol, drinking, and I just joined joined forces, but not to this extent. But I remember seeing a personal trainer sitting there with their Maccas outside a pub smoking. I'm like, what the f I'm 18 years old thinking like I've got to, you know, be disciplined and all this stuff and this person's drunk. Yep. Eating Maccas, smoking a cigarette. I used to be a beer smoker, social smoker. Really? Oh, yeah. Like... Yeah, I've done it before. <laughs> yeah. old days. <laughs> oh, here we go. The juicy <laughs> stuff. No, it's only no. taken us, what, how long? Me and my mates. 37 minutes. <laughs> oh, my God. The best <laughs> part is live with those guys. That's really? Okay. We, used live, oh, we used to live above Lizzie and my best mate, Peter. Oh, yeah. And Daddy Mitra Bay on Carabba Road. Those are the days. And we, our deck used to overlook the whole harbour. We used to have this no massive way. deck. And we had this little balcony. But the <laughs> best party we had was when we would have people at our place and then we'd have people up at Katie's house. And everyone's just like in between. up and down the stairs. Really? Kind of, oh, it was so good. We'd have yeah. decks out on the balcony. Like, yeah, those, those were the Those are the days? <laughs> yeah, they were the days. Tom, would you be watching this right now? <laughs> oh, he used to DJ at Buddy Home Bar, so he's had his oh, time. Oh, wow, yeah, he's had his, he would have had his time. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It would have been so, worse, wouldn't yes. it? Yes, run up the cross, whatever that is, World Bar, and then Home Bar. Yeah, he's yeah. done all the clubs when he was younger. Right, I had no idea. Yeah, so. I, like it. I was a club was man. Time yeah, well. I'm a club. I love the club. I'm clubs. a club man. I'm a club man. Which clubs were your clubs? He's an Eastern Suburbs boy. Oh, what? Tank. tank. Yeah. My, my yeah. uncle used to run Tank. Did he? So I felt like, talk about a rock star. It's like everyone had this massive line down the street. And then yeah, um, yeah, it's like Uncle in, Stewie. Yeah. He's like, yeah, Liam, come in with his clipboard straight in there. I'm like. <laughs> <laughs> and then that's it, a Chinese restaurant. Yeah, well. Is it? Yeah, yeah it is. The it's a um, group. Yeah, it's, oh. a, it's a big one. Funny story though, my mate who's um, Chinese, yeah. well, he's born in Australia, but he looks Chinese, obviously, and his parents are full Chinese. 
all these families, Chinese. So I know I'm saying Chinese a lot, but I'm just trying to, <laughs> just trying to give you a bit of a... Do they own the Chinese restaurant? No, 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 no. no. <laughs> so I just wanted to give you a brief, brief background. Yeah, so yeah. he looks nothing like me. That's what I'm trying to get at. Okay, yeah, yeah. So he decides to use the Uncle Stewie card and goes, when he when we were drunk at 21 <laughs> years old, goes, my uncle works here, like hiccuping like, I'm, yeah, my uncle works here, you know, wow, being drunk. So and he goes, who's your uncle? The bar, the whatever it is, okay. bouncer. And he goes, Uncle Stewie, Stuart Taylor. And then he goes, bring Uncle, bring Stewie out. And <laughs> she brings him out. He's like, he's not my fucking nephew. <laughs> Did you know him? No, I didn't even know him. He's oh, like, who the hell are you, mate? He's like, Uncle Stewie. <laughs> I was sure he's a fucking. So like wasn't a chow moment. Night. Huh? Sounds like a chow moment. What's a chow moment? You're from Hangover. Oh, chow is my oh. favourite on Hangover. Oh, yeah, he's hilarious. Yeah. yeah. So try to use Uncle Stewie card. doesn't work when you're Asian. Apparently not. <laughs> <laughs> Jeez. But yeah, that was a good club. Tank yeah. nightclub. That was my club. Was it? Loved it. Even the East? East, East and Southern Boy. No, we used to venture into Palat. Pa- pa- oh, my God. Palace. We call it Palace, but it's a palace. I'm trying to make it sound a lot better than it was. Could you palace? Oh, now it's a pavilion. Not a fan of you. Sticky floors, yeah. three dollar drinks, yeah. all sorts of stuff. It was just, yeah, that's what we loved about it. <laughs> and just then you had a party. And then for the night. Yeah, yeah. And then when that wrapped up, you used to walk across the road to Coogee Bay and then go to Selena's. There's a yeah. nightclub in there. Yeah. So yeah, those are the days. Oh no, we used to do North Sydney, North Sydney, Neutral oh, yeah. Bay, the, the Oaks, the Greenwood. No, Greenwood Thursday night. We used yeah. to do Greenwood Thursday night oh, yeah, or Sunday Fire night. Firehouse Sunday. in North Sydney. Yeah, but now it's been ruined, ladies. Yeah, Our lockout laws. Lockout laws. What do you think of that? I know. Yeah, vote for. Good question. Small business party. <laughs> <laughs> oh, so <laughs> it kicks in the open. So it kicks in the open. Yeah. I don't know anything about the voting situation, like Labor or Liberal, I'm not really into it. So I don't really want to go down the path of politics too much. No, no. So we never know, we always, I know not to talk about politics, mm. but I walk in and I go, Emily, who do I vote for? She goes, go Greens Party, Labor. That's, who, you know, she did a survey. Of course, ladies love doing their surveys. Yeah, yeah, did a survey and Labor came up. So, oh. so I had to go and vote Labor. So wow. I voted Greens and Labor. And then I get out of there and I go, Emily, well, who'd you vote for? She goes, Liberal. I fucking voted Labor because you told me to vote Liberal. <laughs> what the fuck? I don't know who I'm voting for. You go the opposite to me. You need to she goes, I decided it. the last minute to do Liberal. I'm like, I just voted Labor now. Oh, well, we can't be friends. But, um, <laughs> I voted so Greens. It's female's prerogative, Greens. prerogative to change your mind at the last minute, right? Greens. That's what I was just going for. I just wanted climate change. You know, I just feel like climate change is existing, so I think that they're, they're, they're on the bandwagon of climate change. In politics, let's see if they follow through. Yeah, exactly yeah, right. They're all full of shit, aren't they? <laughs> yeah, yeah. They're exactly. all crooks. All of them. Yeah. So, going forward, fertile ground, Mm -hmm. this is what we're going to call the podcast, wait for it to drop, ladies and gentlemen. Um, What are we going to go through? Are we going to actually document your journey or is it more... I think it might be a good idea to document the journey and also talk to some really great people out there who are making the conversation a bit more open, Mm -hmm. like where Mm -hmm. we started in this conversation, we were saying, not many people talk about this. And this is the problem, people really don't talk about, like... Guys, for example, don't talk about their family issues. My husband's making a point of talking to people about it because he understands where I'm coming from, but I feel like if you don't talk about it, you feel lonely. You feel like you're the only person that's ever gone through this. Yeah. So for me, I think it's a really important thing to, to bring up and talk to people who are making a point of, of talking about this. Now, see, that's a good concept as well, like just to have the males talk about this. From a male's perspective, I didn't know, like before this conversation, yeah. like it's not disrespectful, it's sexist, but I just thought, I didn't know it could have been from the man that's struggling to, yeah. you know, a chromosome. Like how am I meant to know that until... Yeah. Until you try and have kids. Try, exactly. Until I try and have kids, so And that's right, something that, that you think comes so naturally, you don't even think that there would be an issue. No, not at all. No, not at all. So, yeah, so I think the idea is talk about what the journey is, what happens along the way, and then, yeah, talk to the people that, you know, know all the good stuff about this. Yeah, mm. get the experts. And from both sides, because we did acupuncture before Matilda. Mm. 
um, you know, we've been trying for 12 months and I went and saw Kai, who Peter mm. knows really well, and mm. he's amazing. And we did acupuncture for three months. Now, whether or not it worked, he put me on some Chinese herbs and we did acupuncture once a week. Um, we fell pregnant within three months of trying it. Now, everybody said it's a placebo effect. There's, mm. you know, there's no scientific research behind it. Whether or not it is, it definitely made me think in my head that we were doing something towards it. Mm. Yeah. And I think that's a big part of it as well, is doing as much as you can that you're comfortable with and yeah. whether or not that could be just doing acupuncture or it could be, you know, making sure that you're changing your fitness regime or changing how you're eating. Like a lot of people in these forums that I'm jumping onto, some people go to real extremes, whereas other people are just comfortable doing the smallest changes. Yeah. And I think everyone's different. Mm. But yeah, there's lots are. of ways to do it. For me, it was just lying down for an hour once a week, <laughs> having pins put into me because I don't do that naturally is yeah, lie down, right. you know, it's on the go all the time. And part of it is ensuring that there's no stress and that comes in the form of exercise as well. So a lot of women don't get pregnant because they are over-exercising. Yeah, or probably under-exercising as well. Like a lot of, like my first pregnancy, I was like, okay, I've got to be really careful. Yeah. Can't do much. And then with every pregnancy... And every loss, you increase weight, and it's really hard to get off. So then there's that mental game as well going on. So is that an individual person to know if they're over exercising or under exercising? Because it could be, but could it be a particular body type? For would, does that make sense? Like you might be the type of body type that needs a high amount of training. Mm, I don't so, know. I don't know how I would how you would measure that. How you would understand that? Yeah. But I know that, like, when, when I was first pregnant, it was just more about I need to be really careful, you know. I need to be gentle on myself. So I was gentle on myself. And then every time it's been different, the last pregnancy, I kind of went, I thought, I'm not going to change my routine. I'm just mm. going to keep doing what I'm doing. The end result's the same. The same. Yeah. So I think it's more about what you're comfortable with and, and how it supports your mind because exercise is so important for your mind to be able to cope with these things. Yeah, definitely. And there is a weight shift. Like, I put on about four or five kilos through our one round mm. you know mm. and um and that battles with your head as well because you think well if it's not successful i'll just put on this five kilos oh, yeah. for what yeah um and then to have to do that i think in, in our industry i know a lot of women who haven't got pregnant because of the fear of putting on weight as a trainer yeah, I've yeah okay. that, you know, so there, there are a lot of women, especially that I went through, who haven't had children because there was this huge stigma around, oh, you're, in a fit, you're a fitness instructor, you're a personal trainer, you can't put on the weight mm -hmm. um, or the exercise intensity. If that's your full-time job, that's a, a, an issue as well, of, you know. Yeah, you see people on social media, I can't remember her name, uh, one of the sort of, she's a fitness trainer and an influencer, she's pregnant at the moment. Not sure until now. Duncan? No. Anyway. Okay, let's be honest. That's it. Um, is she pregnant? Yeah, yeah, apparently. Yeah, okay. Yeah, so apparently she was getting a lot of shit from people saying, oh, you know, you shouldn't be training and blah, blah, blah. And it's like, she's like, I know my body. Mm. I know what I can do. Yeah. But this is social media, so that people are handing shit on. Yeah, that's what it's for. That's what. Right. Yeah, I used to train a client uh, and I trained her from before she was, obviously, before she was pregnant up until a month before mm. and she was skipping and doing deadlifts and all sorts Unreal. of stuff and I'm like yeah. I'm, I was freaking out she was just like no I'm sweet yeah. yeah she started running and then she would beat the other girls running I'm like what is going on with you <laughs> how are you doing this Super like I'm like sit down like put your feet up we just chill out we we'll yeah, have a chill yeah. out session <laughs> no no I want it. I want the hard work okay <laughs> well, she obviously knows her body enough exactly to know right. where it works. And I think that's like any athletic sport or endeavour or whatever. You know, if you train enough or you've done enough that you know what your body can and can't do, then... So the biggest risk comes from women who've never trained, yeah. fall pregnant, and then they want to exercise because we don't know how your body's going to adapt to the exercise yeah. prior to being pregnant. So we have no idea when you do get pregnant how it's going to react. So uh, for women who come to me uh, who have just fallen pregnant and have never trained, walk. Mm. Yeah. Yeah, because I don't know what's going to happen, you know, during what, while you're pregnant and what that impact is going to have on your yeah. unborn fetus. So just just walk, mm. uh, maybe see, you know, pregnancy Pilates or yoga. Um, but again, you know, if you weren't doing Pilates or yoga prior to getting pregnant, you don't know the impact. Mm. Yeah. So. You 
into that overheating, are you? Not overheating, different body positions, mm. heart, rate. Um, heart, heart rate, rate. Yeah, blood okay. pressure, the whole bit. We mm. just, you know, exercise ex- puts massive exertion on our major organs and mm. how that affects a, an unborn fetus is, you know, we don't know. But if mm. you have been exercising before, then as you say, you know, just go to your it. body and, yeah. Keep and skipping. Keep skipping. That's amazing. That's good. <laughs> she was skipping until a month before. That's wow. freaking me out. Yeah. That's unreal. <laughs> she probably won't be skipping after the birth. Let me know. <laughs> Ever again. Ever again. <laughs> I'm done. Yeah. I'm done. I used, remember I used to take a group of women at uh, Willoughby Leisure Centre and I used to be like 23 out there skipping. Come on, ladies, we can't skip. Yes, you can. Just practice. I'll tell you a Right. Yeah, right. <laughs> yeah. 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 yeah I, I get it. Yeah. So true. <laughs> Yeah. So I think that's uh, the scary bit, especially for a male who never will never get pregnant. No. Well, I have no understanding. Mum always lets me know about it though. She starts laughing. She goes, "Oh, I just, you know, just having a joke. Oh, just wee myself. And that's your fault, Liam. <laughs> yeah. Why is it? Why do I get brought into this? What yeah. have I done wrong?" She yeah. goes, "It's your fault. Before you, I'm like, you had another son before me. It could have been his fault." That's right. Fifty fifty. Yeah, fifty fifty. Yeah. Mums. <laughs> Mums. Mums. Your lover. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> and she wouldn't have it any other way. Yeah. Maybe she does wear yourself when she coughs and laughs. Do you, do you know what type of mum you'll be? Do you, do you feel like, well, because it's going to happen. Yeah. Well, that's... It's going to happen. So what, what type of mum do you want to be? I don't know. I kind of think I probably would have been a different mum in the beginning of this whole journey. Mm. You know? Yeah. Yeah, really? Yeah. All right. Okay. Especially after the first miscarriage, we got a dog. So I think I'm... <laughs> yeah, I've learned how to discipline something. And, so maybe, yeah. maybe it is fate then. Yeah, I, I like, definitely think so. You, if you, if you, you think about that, yeah, if you think about that, then if you didn't have IVF, because mm-hmm. you might have been a certain mother, which is not meant to be designed for that particular child that comes along, yeah. and then you go through the IVF process, and then you've you've evolved. you've evolved as a, a mother before you became a mother yep. to the point where the right um, person comes along, and that's what you've that's what it's designed for. So yeah, you yeah, could think about it. That. That's a good one. Yeah, you know I mean, like yeah. I definitely think I would have. It's fate. Been different. Mm. You know, a couple of years ago. It becomes a, a a lot more precious, maybe as well. That you know, bringing that mm. life form in. If you have had to to struggle to get there. Mm. So yeah, I imagine there's that as well. Like, yeah. I mean, it's hard because it's hard to be able to compare the two. You know, what it would have been like as a first time mum, no problem. But I think you're right. I think you try so hard and you put so much energy and effort into it. Yeah, I think there's, there's maybe different. But I think being a mum, you also react to the child's personality. Yeah. And being flexible is one of the, the best things, I think, being, you know, encouraging but also being flexible because they're their own person. You know, I notice that now, you know, I don't have any expectations um, except she will have a good education. <laughs> <laughs> it's my number one. Um, you know, it obviously comes from many different forms, but you know, they express themselves and, and you know what they love and what they don't love and mm. you know, and, and I think they just bring that on board and, and work with it and how they their energy levels as well. My nephew is um amazing, like his dad's an engineer, so he, you can see now he's just so you know, meticulous with everything and mm. um, whereas Matilda's completely the opposite. She's down the kid down the back when everybody's doing kindy kung fu dancing, you know. And is she? <laughs> so she's they have individual. their own she's definitely an individual. Yeah. And so they have their own flair and you just you know, I think being an older mum as well, you know, not being twenty. Yes. You yeah. can sort of compartmentalise and, and analyse bit more in terms mm. of you know oh, that's why they do it i'm going to encourage and that oh, way whereas yes. a young mum you might just get frustrated that you and not understand it well you've got so much more life experience when you're older as well mm. Definitely. So that. and what about uh the kid this concept of the kid picking the parents not the other way around yeah i think that's how would thing. how would you how would your life maybe as well that they need to come around. Mm-hmm. It's a bit deep, but yeah, they yeah. need to come at a certain time to teach you something. Yeah, absolutely. So whatever it is, patience. If they're an annoying kid like yeah. me, I taught my mum <laughs> patience. I think. Well, Katie could and, probably you know elaborate a bit on that because Katie's got the children. But I think I definitely think after my first miscarriage, I spoke to someone who um, I did a lot of healing work with previously, and she said exactly that. She said, you know, the time's not right, and you know, everything is is a learning process. So. You know, this is this is all to bring the right 
soul mm. at the right time. Yeah. And, you know, yeah, getting at the right moment. Yeah, which it leaves it more exciting then, doesn't it? Oh, yeah, because then it's more, there's more anticipation of, yeah. wow, this is really going to be the right person. Yeah. Yeah, it's cool. It's really cool. Mm. Yeah, yeah I definitely, I think... I definitely got the right one. <laughs> <laughs> and they teach you things about yourself. They test your boundaries. Yeah. Um, you know, what you're willing to put up with and what you're not and you know, what value system you want to instill to some degree. But I think it also comes down to that flexibility as a parent. How do you do? I'm, I'm scared to be a parent. I'm honestly, being an uncle is scary enough because mm-hmm. if, if my brother's got three kids under six, and they're like, ah, screaming, like, oh, I'm, like, oh. I'm like, fuck, get me out of here. It's been two hours. I love you, but just go sit over there. Like, it's different with your own. And my parents, my, my brother's sitting there going, don't have kids. <laughs> <laughs> it's timing, right? Like, yeah. You might be scared to have a kid now. Yeah. But that's because it's not your time. Mm, you know, maybe. Right. It probably wasn't my time when I first started trying either because I've never really been a hugely maternal person. I never even really wanted kids until I met my husband and saw how yeah. he is with kids. And I'm like, oh my God, you'd be an amazing dad. Mm. I want to give you that opportunity. Yeah. yeah. I've been told that as well. I'd be a good dad, but I'd just be a disciplinarian. Like, just Discipl- fucking sit over there, mate. <laughs> That's okay. <laughs> That's I can sit over there. Look, I'm the And then I now. say that though, and my mum and Emily are both like, yeah, right. Exactly. As soon as you see your little daughter, you'd be like, I'm like that with my dog. Yeah. <laughs> Kissing her all the time. We are too. What kind of dog? Uh, Australian Shepherd. Oh, nice. So fur baby. Yeah. We've got a beagle. Yeah. They're the best. Dogs are so good. Aussie Shepherd. She's smarter than me. Yep. Smart Australian Shepherd well. smart. It's not hard, but I'm joking. I always, I've always been saying this though. It's like as a joke that she solves maths equations faster than me. Like, and everyone laughs. I always use it, recycle that joke. I'm like, I know I'm going to do this. I just say, I just say it as a joke. Like, oh. she's that smart. She solves maths equations faster Counts than me. Counts the kisses. Counts the kisses. That's right. <laughs> but then, actually, Emily tagged me in a video the other day of Australian Shepherds actually using maths to figure out how to herd sheep in. I'm like, no I've been saying this is a joke the whole time and they're actually <laughs> serious. They actually can solve maths equations faster than human beings That's in so some cool. ways. Some ways, not all of it. I suck at maths. Right? Yeah. That's <laughs> one so person training can only count to 12. <laughs> <laughs> That's, really That's really right. fine. Yeah. Um, well, anything else? I, I don't. There's so many things that we can talk about. Yeah. Um, I think let's just save it for the podcast. And I think so. Yeah. I mm. think that you know, little things will pop up. And yeah, and and we can drip feed it out um, with the podcast and having guests and bite sized well, long content, short content, whatever your strategy is. Yeah. Um, I'm excited. I'm excited. I'm excited. We're excited to help you. Yeah, good. Yeah. We're all going to get pregnant together. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> Only with a food baby. <laughs> all right. And food babies. <laughs> <laughs> You're off. Well, McDonald's is a food baby, isn't it? Right. Excuse me, Katie Turner. I'm not, I'm not a personal trainer anymore. I don't give a shit. Yeah, I drank last night and had Maccas last night. I'm just going to own that shit. I'm in medical yeah. sales now, so... <laughs> I'm, out of the, side. I'm in pharmaceuticals now, so I can fix myself. Yeah, and he's married to a par- oh, not yet married. Yeah. Um, yeah, sorry. <laughs> it will happen. It's it going to happen. happen yeah, yeah, it will happen. Tick it off the list. Tick it off the list. Well, they've got the mortgage now, and they've got the dog. So. Yeah, so it's going to oh, happen. So you're pretty much married. Anyway. Yeah, pretty much. There's no escape. <laughs> no escape. <laughs> I'm I'm sitting there thinking for her though. Like I'm like, are you sure? You want you you want to spend your rest of your life with me? I'm high energetic and annoying. Are you sure <laughs> She's you okay want? With me? That? She's fine. She's like, yeah. She must like me. I know. Yeah. It's a, it's a difficult one. I don't know what she sees. I'm still trying to figure it out. <laughs> Ask her. <laughs> I do every day, baby. Do it every day. Why do you like me? Why do you like me? I said it last night when I was drunk. I'm not talking to her like shit talking about. Uh, and mixed martial arts, and I'm like punching trees and stuff like that. I'm like leaves. Like, look at this, look Bruce Lee shit. I'm like, why do you like me? She goes, I um, don't know. Yeah. <laughs> you're making me question it now. Yeah. I'm driving, and you're drunk, and you're punching trees. Oh, <laughs> so good. Driving, and drunk. Oh, oh god. Yeah. She's loving you right now. Yeah. yeah, that's love, right there. Yeah. She's yeah. like, I'm gonna get you back, you son of a bitch. Is she, is she working today? Is that why no. she drove? No. No. 
Good woman. Hold She's on to that woman. one. Yep, I will. <laughs> <laughs> All right, well, let's wrap it up. Wrap it up. Wrap it up. Thanks for having me, guys. Thank you Thank for your you. time. Any final words of wisdom? I always finish with that question. It's a bit cheesy to finish oh, with, but... You haven't really let me think about it. No. Nah, I'm the... Um, <laughs> be good to your mother. Be good to your mother. That's a good one. For your, for your future child, that's what I'll be telling. <laughs> that's a good one. Her. I'm feeling it's her. Ooh. Yeah. I think that's my people abilities, too. Maybe. I think you do. Yeah. Her. Oh, yeah. <laughs> and it's going to be a, are you going to name it a J name? Really? Yeah. Like Jane. Jasmine. Jasmine. Jemima. Jemima. Oh, I can't do Jemima. Reminds me of another word and it's just, <laughs> I don't know what it is. It correlates so bad. That's that intimacy approach. Yeah, I don't know. Well, I don't even know what you're referring to, Katie. It starts with a V. Oh. Yeah, okay. <laughs> Going back Jesus. to that Australian, Australian shepherd being smarter. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe being quicker. It's not hard. <laughs> Told you, I wasn't even a joke, I was being serious. So good. So I can't uh, wait to meet lovely Jemima. I'll bring Jemima in. <laughs> yeah, I'm guys. You make me cry. Yeah, me too. I did put eyeliner on today. Usually I'm here in my active wear because I do the straight in from activewear but we weren't into it. with a with a coffee in hand rocking up late like she's still she's talking babies. about she's talking about being a rock star like partying like a rock star how late was she coming in rocking in i'm just trying to you meant to come i'm trying to have banter i'm, 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 I'm not bantering about this I'm, she came in late she's trying to be a rock star now she's like a rock star oh, without being a rock star yeah, yeah. hey it was like 12 33 my friend mate it was late that's rock, rock star time. That's rock and roll. That's rock and roll. She's rock and roll, She's rock and roll yeah, still. Wait till you yeah. both have kids. Then you'll be rock stars as well every single yeah. day, rocking up everywhere late. I'm so always like this. Awesome. Awesome. We've got kid names, by the way. What? We've got kids' names already planned out. Do you? Yeah. Stop it. Yeah. Are you going to tell best, on air? The best kids' names. I'm telling you. You can't beat them. Give but then, no, I can't. Man. I can't do it. <laughs> I said, Emily, just don't tell anyone your kids' names. These are the best names ever. And then she's like, ah, to her best friends, oh, these are the names, these are the names. I'm like, you don't tell people. <laughs> don't tell people. Mum <laughs> wants me to name a kid um, Bella Lucia Zolo. That's cute. Yeah. yeah. So that, that's but that's not, name. that's not yeah. what, oh, it, it could be down there, but not the actual name we're thinking about. If it's a, a girl to start off with, it's something what else. What about Enzo for a boy? Enzo. Yeah, the old school names coming back. I love Ziggy for a boy. Ziggy. Oh, that's cute. Mm, that one is, is always my boy. But then Tom's last name Zeman. It's like Ziggy Zeman. Ziggy Zeman. Ziggy Zeman. I like it. Mum's like, you can't have a child named Ziggy. What are his prime minister? It's like, mm, Tom and I are probably not going to be prime minister. <laughs> <laughs> More likely to be a rock star than it Matilda is. Matilda is yeah. sitting in the background at Kitty Kung Fu dancing. I don't know if she's going to be yeah. famous. <laughs> but she already calls herself Tilly Z. So she's Tilly Z. Be she's going to be a rapper. Oh. She's a rapper. What's your name? Tilly Z. Only because there's a Tilly M at Kindy. <laughs> oh, that's cute. Do you, do you have uh, baby names picked out before we go? Um, Enzo. We, no, no Enzo. No. We started a little list. Yeah. But we put it on the back burner. We thought we'd just have the kids. Yeah. <laughs> no, I don't, yeah. Focus on the kid. Focus first. on the kid. Yeah. It I might make that more exciting and part of the visualization process. Yeah. You never know. I'm not oh, telling you what to do because I don't have a fucking clue. I have the idea of seeing the baby and going, you look like a. Yeah, you look like a. Yeah. Harry. Harry. Yeah, that's, Whoa. Not, that's not on the list. That's not on the list. Oh, that's my yeah. sister's and my nephew. He's a, and he's very much a Harry. I'm I'm actually fearful. I'm, I'm not fearful and ex and actually not fearful anymore because she's picked the names of our future kids already. So kind of fearful at the start, knowing that she's already picked kids' names before we're even married. But now I'm okay with it, knowing after what happened with our fur baby, she had dead set three hundred names picked out for that dog. <laughs> I had one. Yeah, I had to. This is what I had to do with it. I had to get her down to 20 names. That took me three months or two months or whatever it was to get her down to 20 names. Before you got the dog? Before I got the dog. Okay. And then she goes, what do you want? What do you want? I'm like, Bailey. It's Bailey, Bailey, Bailey. It's Bailey. That's it. That's Bailey? It's Bailey. Yeah. I got I don't know how I did it, but I got it. I was going to say, who's the <laughs> So she goes, 20, she had to get it down to 20 names. I'm like, she goes, what about, um, I don't know, she'd come up with some random name. Zephyr. 
I'm like, oh, just pick 20. Just pick fucking 20 <laughs> names. 20 that's going to so be we had to get it down to 20 names. And I go, listen, Emily, it's really frustrating me now. I, you know, I'm feeling a sense of frustration. You know, I'm trying to be like an empathetic partner. Mm-hmm. Inside, I'm, my blood's boiling. <laughs> This is what we're going to do. We're going to sit down together inside. I'm like, fucking sit down because I'm really getting my nerves done. But sit Probably down, babe. Sit down, yeah. babe. We're going, to put de- we're going to put 20 names in the hat and then we're going to draw them out. So we had to draw them out. She got down to 10 and then she got down to 5 and then it ended up being Bailey in the end anyway. <laughs> Why the fuck is it Bailey? We just saw our dog and then we drove home and threw a few names out and went, yeah, Rocky, that's it. Um, Rocky. What about gender? Knowing the gender? No. No. You don't get many surprises in life. Mm. Uh, we did. I was like, nah, I'm planning for that. I hate grey and I hate yellow. It's either pink or blue. <laughs> <laughs> that's fair enough. I don't like those colours. <laughs> yeah, like, nah, that's not. I'm not. I need to know. I need to know. Yeah. yeah. Part of me really wants to know, but at the same time, I'm like, oh, see what happens. Yeah. Mm. What about gender revealing parties now? Oh, yeah, no, it's a party sure. for everything. I don't want to go to these gender revealing no. parties, mate. Look, I've gone to your bloody engagement party, I've gone to your wedding, I'll go to your baby shower and wedding the head. You don't get a gender freaking party as well. It's another present. Yeah, let's pop a balloon and go, woo! Yeah. Like, mate, it should be between me and her, not you guys. You yeah. guys just be there for when they're screaming. The party afterwards. Yeah, the party afterwards, yeah. and when the kids scream, we can hand them over to you. That's yeah. all we want. That's yeah. all I want. So, Katie? You're going to be a good auntie in the future? <laughs> well, Matilda will be old enough by then to look up. She can babysit. Huh? Yeah, Matilda can babysit. Yeah, okay. Matilda can babysit. So you're going to pass the buck, right? Delegator. She, rock star. <laughs> rock star businesswoman over here, <laughs> delegating. I was all... going to be busting my ass here, mate. What are... <laughs> 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 you yeah. got our baby. We got mine and Emily's baby in your hand as well, because I don't want to deal with that screaming kid. <laughs> and you're the pro. You've done it before. Oh, yeah, by the pro. time you have been after that, <laughs> <laughs> stick the baby in a little like crash thing. I'll know about. their ABC before they're six months old. <laughs> <laughs> we meant to finish this like ten minutes ago. All right, yeah, let's go. We've got it. Is Andrew? Oh, we've got to go now. Anyway, yeah. we've got a, we've got a meeting after this, so we've got to wrap up. All right. Thanks for having Thank me. Thank you. Thanks for coming all the way to nice. the Pod Hub, not the Porn Hub. Looking forward to coming back. Yes. Yeah. Looking forward to producing your fertility ground. Fertile ground. Fertile ground. <laughs> it might change names by the time we start it. I need another call. You know what, what What? I hope happens what? is that you don't even start the podcast. Yeah. I know that's a... That's a I know, that's uh, Katie's probably just going, what, what would you say that for? But <laughs> Business. Business. <laughs> no. We'll do it anyway because obviously there's a lot of information we'll be yeah. Yeah, I think, about. And that's but 